Hey y'all, this is Tanya from Front Yard Homestead, Backyard Raised Bed. I'm back today with another talkie video. Today I'm gonna be talking about how to deal with those bugs and pests that we all have in our yards and have to deal with if we're going to garden at all. Before I get started, I wanna take a moment to shout out Tony Daly. She is one of my favorite YouTubers. I have been following Tony for years. She's a natural hair YouTuber and she also creates beautiful jewelry as well as other natural hair products and wigs. This is not a wig, this is my hair. <laughs> but Tony designed these earrings and I got these years ago. They say keep it 100% natural. I'm not sure if these are facing you or not, so I'm gonna turn them both directions. <laughs> keep it 100% natural. These are really light balsa wood earrings. They are my favorites. I have had these for years and I rock these earrings all the time. If you know me in real life, you know it's true. I'm always wearing these earrings. So I just wanted to let people know where they came from because I always get questions about them. And I'm happy to always shout out another YouTuber, natural hair YouTuber, sister, love Tony. Hey Tony, love you. Um, I hope y'all check out her site, TonyDaily.com. I'll put a link here. I'll, I'll actually, I'll put the title here and I'll put a link in the description for her site. Alrighty guys, so today we are gonna be talking about gardening pests, specifically bugs. I know that dealing with bugs in the garden can be frustrating, whether they're those moths which lay eggs, which hatch caterpillars that then eat up our tomatoes or our tender greens, or those awful squash vine borers that work their way into our squash plants and, and cucumbers and um, zucchini and pumpkins and then destroy them from the inside out. Ask me how I know. Or those aphids that like to cling to our plants, especially like toward the end of their lives. Ugh. Garden bugs can drive us all crazy. So today I wanna to talk about a few tips and tricks that I've found which help keep the bugs at bay or sometimes even eliminate the problem altogether. Shout out to the NASA facility in Houston, Texas where I got this shirt. I know y'all are trying to figure out what it says. Intelligence is the ability to adapt to change. Bloop, Stephen Hawkins. Or Hawking, not Hawkins. Okay. Disclaimer, I am not telling you all of the solutions for all of the garden pests. I'm just going to be sharing what has worked for me with the specific pests that I deal with here in Austin, Texas. I have heard other people say that these things have been helpful to them. I've kind of acquired this knowledge, this information over time, um, researching, asking other people what they do, trial and error. And this is what I've come to that's helped me. So I'm going to share the things that have helped me. But I will also share a few things that other people swear by that maybe I don't use, but other people have found helpful as well. So the common pests that I deal with are cabbage worms, roly polies. I know y'all think they're cute, but they're a nuisance. They're a menace, okay? Squash vine borers, aphids, snails, and slugs. Those are my primary pests. Um, there are plenty of other bugs in my garden, but they're not pests, or at least I don't consider them to be pests. I have lots of worms, lots of bees and wasps. I have lots of ladybugs, and those are all our friends. Even some caterpillars um, are not the enemy. Um, they are going to eat your plants, but they're also, you know, really good for the environment. <laughs> so I don't try to get rid of some of them. I'll actually give them some of my plants. I'll sacrifice some of the plants for their sake. But for me, it's that list that tends to destroy my crops, um, get in there and start waging war and trying to eat what I want to eat for myself. One of the first things that I started using when I discovered that my plants were being eaten <laughs> by insects was this product called Thuricide BT. Now the reason I started using that first is because when I first started gardening it was in the winter so I was producing collard greens and cabbage and you know um, things in that family, the brassica family. And I didn't know that those plants are particularly susceptible to cabbage worms. These moths, those little white moths that fly around that seem really pretty, they like to lay eggs on plants in the brassica family, like cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, <laughs> um, collard greens, anything in that family, they want to eat it up. And so they will lay eggs on those plants and then those eggs will hatch into um, these little worms called cabbage worms. And they will eat the plants, eat the leaves in order to you know, get strong. And then they will make a little cocoon and eventually turn into a cabbage moth of their own. 
I'm not trying to feed cabbage worms, okay? <laughs> so what I did was I asked around to a lot of people, women in my gardening group on Facebook, which I have mentioned before. And one of the things that the women in the group mentioned very early on was Thuricide BT. Thuricide BC is Bacillus thuringiensis, and it is, I'm looking down at it, it's a biological insecticide. What it does is it destroys the worms or the caterpillars actually um, internally. So you mix a portion of the solution that's in the bottle with some water, and then you spray that on the leaves, the top and the bottom. Make sure you have full coverage of the leaves, and the caterpillars will eat the leaves and they'll ingest the toxin, they'll ingest the insecticide. And the insecticide will activate internally and will end up destroying the moth or the um, caterpillar. So applying it, like spraying it on the worm, the caterpillar is not going to have any effect. They have to ingest it in order for it to work. And it's a pretty good product. What I do is I spray like every couple of weeks, especially when I have crops that are brassicas, I'll spray every couple of weeks starting before I see the cabbage worms, and that tends to take care of it. Another thing that I do to deal with those is I have covered beds. You've seen, if you've seen any of my other videos, you've seen my covered beds. My husband spent some time creating amazing raised beds for me with covers that are hinged, they have a little handle, and they're covered in very strong garden tool. So it's hard for those bugs to get in. They're not gonna get in there unless I leave the beds open. And that's an excellent deterrent because the best way to handle it is really to not let them get to your plants in the first place. But if you don't have covered beds, one of the best things you can do for cabbage worms is thuricide BT. Another pest that I have is roly polies. They get on my last nerve. Why? Because roly polies like to get in there and eat things when they're really young and small and close to the soil, like spinach leaves. <laughs> um, also my cabbage leaves the collard green leaves, those roly-polies like to get in there and munch on that. I know it doesn't seem like roly-polies would do that, but those bad boys will climb up a stalk and start eating on your plants. Snails will do it too. So one of the things that I use to deal with those guys is Sluggo Plus. Not regular Sluggo, but Sluggo Plus. I have regular Sluggo, but it doesn't work on the roly-polies. It does work on the snails. But Sluggo Plus, it deals with slugs, snails and roly-polies. Sluggo Plus has iron phosphate and spinocide in it and those are both naturally occurring in soil so they're not going to harm the soil as they degrade into the soil. The third item that I swear by when I need to deal with pests in the garden is insecticidal soap. I love this stuff. This is insecticidal super soap by Bonide. I have used different types of insecticidal soap. They all work well. Um, I use insecticidal soap largely for aphids and spider mites. They um, tend to get into my tomatoes and peppers and eggplants and things like that, especially as we get into the heat of the summer. So I like to spray those down with the insecticidal soaps. This is a pre-mixed bottle. I haven't found any that's not pre-mixed and I don't make my own, although some people do but get you some insecticidal soap. Um, it works really well to deter bugs and if you have the bugs already, to kill the ones that are there. The active ingredient in insecticidal soaps are the potassium salts that are in there, the fatty acids and salts that are in soap. That is what will destroy the insects. The last item that I use to deal with bugs in the garden is one that's kind of hit or miss for me. I don't use it a lot, for the garden, <clears throat> it's a huge bag, so bear with me. It's called Diatomaceous Earth. This is a food grade variety. I use this for my chickens as well as, as an insecticide in the garden. You'll hear people refer to it as DE. Diatomaceous Earth is really great for me in treating ants. I will get huge amounts of ants piling up along my raised beds. They like to get under the covering, and when I open it, there's like 8,000 ants there. <laughs> I don't want all that. So I use my DE and I'll sprinkle it, and that will get rid of that massive amount of ants. I don't do well with Texas ants. If I get bitten by an ant here, my whole arm, if it was my arm that was bitten, my whole arm is about to swell up for like three days. I don't know. So 
aunt and I, we don't agree in the garden. Even when I have on gloves and sleeves, they'll climb up in there. So I'm going to try to minimize the amount of ants that are clustering around my raised beds. What diatomaceous earth is, is silicon dioxide. Let me read some information that I found on the National Pesticide Information Center. Diatomaceous earth causes insects to dry out and die by absorbing the oils and fats from the cuticle of the insect's exoskeleton. Its sharp edges are abrasive, speeding up the process. It remains effective as long as it is kept dry and undisturbed. And again, that's from the National Pesticide Information Center. I will include a link in the description bar. That gives you a little bit of information about diatomaceous earth. Now, like I said, I only use it for ants, but other people use it a lot. They'll use it for some of the other insects that I've discussed, but I have found it to be very effective when I use it in my garden. So those are the items that I use to deal with pests in the garden. They're all recognized as organic pesticides or insecticides. If you see the seal OMRI listed like that, that's generally a good indicator that you have something that is organic. OMRI listed means that they're for organic use. So I try to find things that are for the most part safe. Um, the insecticidal soap, I'm not gonna promise that about the insecticidal soap. I'm not positive, but from what I understand, it's pretty safe. If y'all are enjoying this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That really, really helps me out. Um, it gets me moving in the algorithm. Also, if you share it, that helps me. And if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. You can go ahead and click the subscribe button right down below and click the notification bell so you'll always know when a new video is coming. Okay, so now that we have talked about some of the things that I use to address pests in the garden, let's talk about some things that other people use. These are practices that other people swear by. Um, I have not tried all of them. I have tried some of them and they didn't necessarily work for me, but that doesn't mean they won't work for you. So the first one is beer. <laughs> people who struggle with slugs will often recommend putting flat beer in a bowl and sticking that in the garden at ground level because the beer, the slugs will be attracted to the beer and will climb in there and drown in it. So I put bowls of beer out in my yard when I was trying to deal with what I thought was slugs, but turned out to be roly polies. So needless to say, I didn't get any slugs in the bowls like I was hoping. And I eventually realized that my issue was roly polies. So the Sluggo Plus helped for me. But if you do struggle with slugs, a quick and easy solution might be the beer you have in the fridge or the pantry. Just let it go flat, open it, let it go flat, and then pour it into a bowl. And if you have a bunch of slugs in the morning, you solve the problem. <laughs> a lot of people use neem oil. I have a bottle of neem oil. I should have showed it to y'all. I'm sorry. But neem oil is something that a lot of gardeners love. It's a natural oil. People mix it into a spray and they will spray it for everything, for all of the bugs. Um, some people use it as a weekly or a bi-weekly application to deal with many of the bugs that I've mentioned. Some people mix it with a little bit of soap, like Dawn soap, and they spray that. Some people use neem oil to treat powdery mildew as well. And I'll make another video to talk about powdery mildew because I do fight with powdery mildew in the spring and summer. And I'll tell you what I use to treat that. But some people use neem oil for that as well. Powdery mildew is not an insect. It is a fungus. I've heard people who love to sprinkle cinnamon around the garden, around the soil. It doesn't harm the soil. In fact, it can help aerate the soil and bring oxygen to the soil. Um, I don't know how that works, but that's what I've read. Um, so cinnamon can help deal with um, those soil gnats and um, mosquitoes. So some people swear by cinnamon in their garden. I have not used it to deter bugs. I've used it to deter squirrels. And guess what? It works. They would be cussing me out in the trees and I'd be like, ah, you mad. So cinnamon is good. Um, but like I said, I didn't use it for bugs. I used it for squirrels. Try it out if you like. My garden smelled wonderful when I used it. <laughs> and I used the cinnamon before I had covers on my beds to keep the squirrels from eating my vegetables. The last thing I want to mention, which is definitely not by any means 
the least is companion planting. People swear by companion planting to keep certain bugs away from plants. So there are certain plants that you can plant together to deter um, certain types of bugs. I cannot tell you how to companion plant because I just haven't done enough research consistently on it to know what should go with what to deter insects. I know that some things can go together to deter disease or to um, decrease the likelihood of the spread of disease. But certain plants like to be planted together and certain plants, if you put them near other plants, will keep insects away or keep uh, specific insects away from those plants. I'm sorry I can't give you more information about companion planting, but if that sounds interesting to you and le less invasive, then you can definitely look into that. Um, do your research child, find information about it and share it with me. So what do you do to deter insects or to eliminate them from your garden? I would love to hear your practices, your tips and tricks. Please put them down below, share them. I want the community to hear about it and know about it. I'm so grateful for your input. I don't think that I'm the only one with knowledge about how to deal with pests in the garden. So if you have a plan, let me know what it is, please. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to thumbs up the video. Don't forget to comment and to share it. I make videos like this and I put them up every Saturday morning. I put out family vlogs of our homesteading journey every Wednesday afternoon, so please come check those out as well. I'm not ashamed to say that I am trying to grow my channel and one of the most effective ways to do that is to have my viewers comment and share my videos and subscribe. So that would be a huge help to me if you'd be willing to do that. I would really appreciate it. I am um, believing for great things with this channel. And I want you guys to be a part of it. And so I want you guys to help, help me blow up y'all. <laughs> no, but seriously, thank you so much for being here and for being a part of this community with me. I really value your input. I value your ideas. I've gotten some great comments and feedback. Um, I've gotten some really useful feedback that has helped me to tweak things or change things around. And I want you to know that your input is worth something to me. It means something. It helps me to become a better homesteader. And I want that in my life. I'm here to help teach people and to show people my journey. But also, I'm here because I want to gain from you all. So I got Pepper to join us for my outro today. You're going to see her in part of the outro and part of it she won't be here. But Pepper is saying, comment, like, subscribe, join us. If you watched my latest video, you saw her um, flying out of my arms and being super extra. <laughs> and here's my Joshua. Hi. Who doesn't say much, but he's a strong one. Oh, hi, Pepper. Say hi to YouTube. Say hi to the people. Pepper's a sly one, she is. If you ever watch any of my other videos, Pepper is the one who you can usually hear trilling in the background. She stands at the back door and yaks and yaks and yaks and tries to get our attention. But of course, right now she's being quiet. She's gonna prove me wrong. Told you. Say bye-bye. Check out my last video where I show how Eric canned chicken. It was a great experience and we're going to be using that chicken soon to make a dish. I can't wait to share it with you all. I'll post that right here. And if you are interested in learning how to start seeds and to get your garden going, you can check out this video right here. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.